but this did very little to influence how fans reacted to the infamous phrase. And number Honestly, him saying that as a heel, it makes sense. But him saying it as a face, like, yeah, no. Hey yo, what's happening people? It's your boy Blaze here for Venomous Reactions and today we got a WrestleMania video here for you. And this is 10 awful catchphrases that WWE wrestlers use that never really got over. Now, we all know when it comes down to the wrestling business, like, some catchphrases can become the most iconic with the character. And then there's some wrestlers that really don't need like a catchphrase to get over. They just pretty much beat in. And when you try to force we try uh, when you try to force a catchphrase on a wrestling character and it doesn't really win like the audience over, like you're basically setting that character up to fail. Like it 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 really doesn't make sense. So we're gonna see which catchphrases that was so awful. That it made the list courtesy of WrestleMania. So without further ado, let's check it out. There have been some incredible catchphrases in WWE. From that's the bottom line because Stone Cold said so. To The Undertaker's mm -hmm. simple yet effective. Rest in peace. However, WWE Iconic. has been known to introduce a truly atrocious and borderline cringeworthy catchphrase, and they do everything they can to try and get it over. This catchphrase Facts. is universally rejected by they fans, do. and thankfully, the catchphrase will be slowly erased from that specific wrestler's character. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 incredibly awful catchphrases that WWE tried to get over. I cannot wait to see which catchphrases made this list because I know quite a few. <laughs> Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number 10, X-Pac, your ass is grass. X-Pac was hmm. one of the most underrated stars of the Attitude Era. He was a great worker, but the problem was that he just couldn't let the DX persona go. They tried to do some unique things with this character, but every time they did this, X-Pac would keep all the mannerisms from his character in DX, so nothing felt that different. That is true. He'd become insanely stale. One of his more infamous moments of his career was a time that he introduced one of his worst catchphrases of the entire Attitude Era. Randomly in promos, X-Pac would begin to say, And your ass is grass, and I'm gonna smoke it! Now, this never received a reaction, even from the Attitude Era audience, mainly because it made the credible X-Pac sound completely ridiculous. WWE was so convinced that this catchphrase was going to get over that they produced official t-shirts with the catchphrase on it. And safe to say, they didn't sell particularly well. Number 9. I can honestly see why. Like, like if you, like, you got to think about it. It was the Attitude Era. Like, everything was, like, super edgy, like you got to see more raw and uncut with the Attitude Era. And a catchphrase like that from X-Pac, not really, not really like winning the audience over. Ugh, you got to go back to the drawing board, my guy. But I see what, he, I see what he's talking about. Because, yeah, I would not buy a merchandise with that on the shirt. Like, yeah, no. Ryback, Ryback rules. When Ryback first debuted the Ryback character, he managed to get over mainly thanks to his Goldberg-esque booking, as well as his great catchphrase such as, feed me more and finish it. Upon turning heel in 2013, he would introduce the world to his brand new catchphrase, Ryback rules. This just didn't have the same effect as his prior catchphrase and it fell flat extremely quick. In fact, Ryback's whole heel turn in 2013 was heavily criticized for doing irreversible damage to a popular babyface character. As is typical for a new catchphrase, they would license merchandise with a catchphrase on it, but WWE had derailed Ryback's popularity so much that his merchandise was no longer a hot commodity for fans. 
Number 8. DDP. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. It's well documented just how much of a monumental failure DDP's oh WWE run was between 2001 to 2002. He was one of the most beloved stars in WCW, but they decided to ignore his popularity and instead give him a gimmick of a creepy stalker. Following this disaster of a storyline coming to a close, he would be repackaged as a motivational speaker. This was when DDP would debut a new catchphrase. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. Whilst this certainly wasn't the worst catchphrase in the history of WWE, fans had lost faith in that WWE were going to do anything meaningful with him, so they just didn't care about the catchphrase altogether. Every I, <laughs> I honestly could see why. Like, with a catchphrase like that, man, on someone, on someone of the caliber of DDP, like he was like one of the one of the top stars in the WCW days. And once he came over to the WWE, that whole deranged stalker character, they went with DDP with the angle with the Undertaker and his wife, Sarah, it really did not work out to DDP's favor. And it, it was just downhill from there. Like, <laughs> but that catchphrase was like, ugh. Yeah, I'm not gonna watch this guy anymore. Every WCW fan knew that they missed a huge trick by not utilizing DDP in a main event level capacity, and this is ultimately one of the biggest missed opportunities in the saga of WWE acquiring WCW. Number seven, Kerwin White. It's not right if oh it's not my white. God. In 2005, WWE would decide to give Chavo Guerrero one of the most controversial gimmicks of all time. Guerrero would denounce his Mexican heritage and become Kerwin White. He would now live by the ideology that the Anglo-American way was the way he was going to attain success in life. And to represent this questionable character, he would introduce a brand new catchphrase. If it's not white, it's not right. What made this catchphrase even worse was that Guerrero would often say it in front of black wrestlers. And it just made Ooh. for uncomfortable viewing. It's uncomfortable. <sighs> different time in wrestling, different time in wrestling. But yeah, you got someone like Chavo Guerrero, pretty much denouncing his his Mex his Mexican heritage to give him a whole new character. I am so glad that character did not last long, because. That was so cringe, and it made me just want to turn off the damn TV screen. Like, why would you do this to someone like Chavo Guerrero? And like, think of it, the last name, Guerrero. Again, I, I got to believe that this was behind that. I, I got to believe it. I mean, what, what other answer is there? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Clear why exactly WWE were thinking with this ludicrous gimmick and catchphrase, but thankfully, a gimmick of this nature is highly unlikely to ever be seen again. Number six, Edge, Spear, Spear, Spear. Edge was cemented as one of WWE's top heels in the summer. Great experiences. Uh... Great sound. but an injury forced the rated R superstar to take an extended leave of absence from WWE. When he eventually returned in January of 2010, they wanted Edge to be a babyface for the first time in over five years. This was a decision which received extensive criticism. Whilst Edge returning as a heroic babyface was great to see, he was just so damn evil and compelling as a heel, and fans wanted to see him back to his villainous ways. During his babyface run, he would introduce a babyface chant of Spear, Spear, Spear. Did you think you were gonna get a spear? Spear? A spear? But the crowd didn't take to it as much as WWE or Edge would have liked. It yeah, honestly, that catchphrase was a little bit on the ridiculous side. Like, but I see what he, I see the point he's trying to make. Like, Edge was like so good at playing a heel. Like, I mean, even even when he came back and and he. He basically debuted the Judgment Day, and 
they he tried to go heel, but they like the audience like they just respected him too much to to pretty much boo him, no matter how hard Edge tried to get over. But but yeah, Edge as a heel. Bar none, the best character that was ever that was ever produced in his career. <sighs> but yeah, when he went babyface, like it was difficult for him to get over because he was so good at playing the heel. It came off as natural. You know, him being the babyface. Uh, yeah, I like the audience was like, yeah, I, I just can't see it. I just can't. Felt forced, which summed up the perception of Edge's babyface character at the time. Mm. Number five, Brie Bella, Brie Mode. When Brie Bella first introduced the Brie Mode catchphrase, fans thought that Brie was trolling the fans. This catchphrase is insanely cringeworthy, and it's crazy to think that Brie kept it for a number of years. Brie would often scream the catchphrase whenever she was in an offense in a match, and became notoriously hated, particularly from those fans with a presence on social media. Damn! WWE eventually made the bizarre choice to add someone screeching the words Brie Mode into the start of Brie's theme song. This resulted in one of the most infamous themes in WWE history being produced. Number 4 Anything the Bella Twins Anything that the Bella Twins do is gonna come off as cringe. I mean, and this is the living embodiment of that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, Brie mode, like, what the, what the hell is that? Is that like her form of like, oh, she's hulking out or she's about to go Super Saiyan or something? Like, what is going on here? <laughs> like, oh my God. And to put it in your theme music, that makes it even worse. <laughs> uh, that is self-explanatory. I, I can't. The Rock, boots to asses. Now, the Rock has had several iconic catchphrases, such as... And the hilarious... What's your name? Mark. It doesn't matter what your name is. <laughs> <laughs> One he introduced in 2011 just failed uh... to take off. Some fans were critical of The Rock's 2011 return as it didn't feel like The Rock of old. It felt more like Dwayne Johnson. The majority I can see of these that. critics would often point towards the boots to asses catchphrases that The Rock and the WWE were persistently trying to push as The Rock's next big catchphrase. Whilst the crowd did initially chant along mainly because it was The Rock after all, it failed to have a lasting impact, and fans over a decade later only discussed the aforementioned catchphrase in a negative way. Mm. WWE tried their best to make the catchphrase something special, and this was shown with a sheer amount of merchandise that was produced with the catchphrase plastered right on it. But the main problem was that it felt unauthentic, and it felt like a catchphrase that the beloved character The Rock wouldn't realistically come up with. Number 2. Dolce <laughs> I paused it at the right moment, but yeah, like, someone like the caliber of The Rock uh, doesn't really need a new catchphrase. Like, it's one of those cases, like, if it ain't broke, why fix it? Just stick to what gets the crowd hype, and you'll be good. You know, but I understand, like, some people try to introduce, like, a new catchphrase and try to, like, I guess reinvent themselves, but it normally does not pan out that way. And somebody like the caliber of the rock, he he's like he basically got like a big ass smorgasbord of catchphrases that gets the crowd hype and gets the crowd over. He doesn't need a new one. I'm just saying. Ziggler, it should have been me. Former world champion Dolph it Ziggler has had been a range me. of characters throughout his extended career, but his 2019 heel character was one of the more confusing. Ziggler would be presented as a heel and would work a feud with Kofi oh Kingston over God. the WWE title. Ziggler's motivation during the feud was that he believed that it should have been him, meaning Ziggler believed that all of Kingston's 2019 <laughs> success should have been awarded to him. Ziggler's character was incredibly negative and sucked the life out of the feud. During every <laughs> single promo, Ziggler would state, And you all admire him and it should be me! As it was evidently trying to get that the sounds worse. catchphrase, but it was incredibly annoying and failed to take off as a popular catchphrase. Number two, The Miz. Really? 
Oh, The Miz is a certified success story in WWE. He went from the host of SmackDown to a multi-time WWE champion and is now considered one of the most respected talents in the locker room. He's had Facts. several catchphrases during his past 15 years and some of them have been better than others. Of course. Is a fan favorite, but the dreaded really catchphrase is detested by fans. Miz introduced this catchphrase during his first major push in WWE, and it was clearly designed to be the new version of the What Chant, but it failed to capture any excitement with the audience. Now, some would argue mm. that the What Chant should be on this list, but it did actually have some success. It just got incredibly annoying afterwards. <laughs> Now, The Miz it began did. to deliver the irritating catchphrase as a heel, but then WWE continued to have The Miz try to get the catchphrase over when he turned babyface in late 2012, but this did very little to influence how fans reacted to the infamous phrase. And Honestly, him saying that as a heel, it makes sense. But him saying it as a face, like, yeah, no. Yeah, no, that really does not work. Like, like, come on, my guy. Like, come up with something new. But I get why I get why he's saying that because, you know, it really did feel like it was supposed to be replace like the what chance. And even though it, it is iconic, it gets annoying. So I see why. One Roman Reigns. I'm not a bad guy. It's well documented oh just how poorly WWE presented Reigns when he became a solo act in 2014. His character was disingenuous and forced and he failed to build up a genuine connection with the fans. Despite this disassociation with the fan base, they pushed Reigns to the moon and one of the worst things about this run was WWE's way of making it seem like Reigns didn't care about the negative reaction. During his babyface run, Reigns would debut the catchphrase of I'm not a bad guy, I'm not a good guy. Ugh. I'm the guy. Ugh. Fans outright rejected this catchphrase as Reigns lacked any conviction when saying it. Fast forward to the year 2020 and Reigns would turn heel and deliver some of the most compelling character work of the modern era. During this heel run, Reigns introduced fans to several mm. catchphrases such as the incredibly popular Acknowledge me. This that got him over. Because Reigns is delivering it as if he means it catchphrase isn't composed of lazy written words that will be delivered half-heartedly. But the other <laughs> folks, 10 Facts. incredibly awful catchphrases that WWE really tried to get over. Be Man, honestly, Roman Reigns turning heel in 2020, by far the best thing that ever happened is in his career. Because we all know, like, when he went solo... Yeah, and WWE tried to push him to the moon, no matter how much the fans hated it. They would, they would catapult him to the stratosphere and beyond. But, but the promo work, it just felt unauthentic, unauthentic, and it felt forced. Now, you could tell like the conviction in his voice. Versus back then. Vast difference. Vast difference. But, yo, that is the 10 awful catchphrases that WWE use. I mean, WWE wrestlers. Ah, WWE wrestlers use that never got over. And if y'all know any more, yo, leave it down in the comment section down below. And as always, thank y'all for tuning in. Hopefully y'all enjoyed this. And before. Before I continue on with the outro, please, yo, check out WrestleMania, man. Like, his content is dope and it's spot on and straight to the point, And you'd love to see more of it. Because I know I do. But, as all, like I said, thank y'all for tuning in. Hopefully y'all hopefully y'all enjoyed this one. And don't forget to tell your peoples across the globe. Come kick it with your boys just one good, solid time. Like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to click that bell so you don't miss a video from the kid. You feel me? And please feel free to follow me on social media right over yonder. And this is your boy Blaze here saying Chuck the Deuce. And I will see y'all in the next video. I'm out.